Welcome to another episode of Strive 365, where we're helping guide you to live a better life. Whether it be mentally, physically, emotionally, or spiritually, whether it be personally or professionally, I am your host, Justin Arnold, in the amazing Rock Vox studio. And in this episode, we're going to speak to my good friend, Brian Cash. Uh, he's a firefighter. He's a father. He's a stepfather. He's a business owner. Uh, that's where we connected. Uh, and we just have a lot in common here. And so I want to bring on this episode. He just found a lot of success in both balancing his multiple roles, as I just mentioned, while maintaining a healthy life and overall a cool dude that I knew would provide some valuable tips to help you strive every day. So, Brian, why don't you introduce yourself, tell the guests a little bit about before we get rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah. Brian Cash, I've been a professional fireman for about 20 years. I work for the city of Denver. Um, I've been, I've had and owned multiple supplement brick and mortar retail stores, have an online platform um, for the past 15 years. Um Yep. Stepfather of a 15 and 13 year old uh, girls. And then uh, father of also uh, uh, in May, a three year old daughter as well. So um, house full of ladies for sure. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's everything in the present. I do a lot of teaching and consulting both on the fire rescue side and on, on the nutrition and supplement side and health side. Um, so yeah, always going, always uh, balancing and always attempting to find better balance. Um, but with a lot of, <laughs> with a lot of, with a lot of juggling and balls in the air. So. Yeah. And you said almost 20 years in as a firefighter. Yes. I'm so, 43. So I got hired when I was, uh, 22, 23. Yeah. Wow. So what's, so we're here in Western New York for those uh, yeah. that aren't familiar. So what, what, what kind of fires are you fighting out there? So Western New York, I'm not totally familiar. I grew, I grew up while well, I lived a large portion of my life. I actually got hired from with my first, I got into the fire service for the first time when I was like 21 in Morristown, New Jersey. So I'm very familiar with, I've been in New York a lot, Philadelphia a lot. I, li I lived in Westchester from, from ages 10 to 16, Westchester, Pennsylvania. So, um, as far as my demographic in Denver, Colorado, I'm on a special operations company. So I'm on what's called a heavy rescue. Um, and we handle, uh, we go to all the structure fires, all the car accidents and or with, with people trapped. Um, and in addition to, we handle the special operations disciplines within, within Colorado and specifically the city of Denver, um, which are the, High angle, low angle rope, dive, ice dive, swift water, hazmat, um, oh, wow. collapse, confined space and all that stuff. So um, there, we live in the world of special operations on a team that handles um, all those all those usually low volume, high acuity type calls. So um, so it sounds like mainly so interesting. In my, I was just curious. Yeah. Yeah. yeah go ahead. No, I, yeah, you, no, I, I, I was just, just curious. With four, I'm thinking like forests and mountains and like I'm thinking Adirondacks out here, how we there's fires out there occasionally, not as much. But I was wondering if there was any of that. Um, there, there is. I mean, obviously, we don't have that in the city of. I mean, Denver yeah. is a is, is a what is Massive. considered a medium sized city in the in the mm -hmm. country. So um, it's definitely surrounding us um, for sure. We have a we have a, a wild land team. I I don't work on that team or that's or that deployment team. Um, I have uh, worked for the U.S. Forest Service. I worked in Montana um, for wildland firefighting, specifically in my in my younger years. So, um, am, am versed in that, but don't currently uh, don't currently do that. So, yeah. So you said twenty years, and then you said about fifteen years as far as like supplements and business. So, how how did your experience yeah. as a firefighter get you into that into your nutrition and fitness? Um, I think I think I've always been well. I I, I've always been an athlete or an avid, um, person in the gym and, or activity via sports all the way growing up in high school, college and, and beyond. And I think just the evolution of, um, of keeping that in my daily regiment from a lifestyle perspective, whether it be for personal, um, or, or the career of fire, of firefighting or fire service, um, lends a hand to, um, just being, just trying to be optimal um, and, and not a liability, so to speak, um, in terms of assisting people that call us, right? I don't want to be part of the problem. I want to be part of the solution. So, 
Oh, for sure. And like, I just, I'm friends with firefighters here and I know one of the challenges here with, for them <clears throat> is balancing, you know, the work, the home, the life balance, but also just the health. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I know, uh, for here it's, it's a lot of, you know, from between heart conditions and also back issues, physical, and just, yeah. uh, how can you talk on that as far as what you do and what you could offer some tips for those like that? Yeah, I, I think these professions, fire, police, military, or anything in that world, you're going to, uh, unfortunately be more susceptible to, uh, injury just based on the line um, of work that has been chosen. Um, yeah, anything from broken fingers to I, I broke L one through three, uh, dislocations of shoulders and, and bicep tendons, surgeries, and all kinds of stuff in my career. <clears throat> um, but, um, how do you lend a hand to that? I think, I, I think from a recovery perspective, uh, training around that injury. So how do we prevent it? We, we prevent those injuries in our line of work to, um, by, by being active and training on a regular basis from a aerobic perspective, uh, because there's a high demand on lung capacity, VO two max heart rate, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and also from a strength perspective. So we go from, you know, sleeping literally to, which is what we'll call that baseline zero to 110% in the matter of seven minutes, you know, tones go off. We, we get in the truck and go to somebody's worst day of their life, right? Their house is burning down. Some yeah. they've been in a car accident or whatever. <laughs> so, um, I look at it in a couple different facets. One is the physical side. Yep. I need to be physically able to lift, move and transition both for me, my crew and, and citizens. Um, but where, what I didn't look at when I was younger and now I'm, I'm very, aware of is the mental is the mental nervous system taxing of that um you know sleep deprivation high stimulant whether it be caffeine or some side of outside source to keep us awake and engaged um not only in, in shift but even coming off of shift so like 24 hours is a long time to be engaged and then and then we come off of work shift and then we're expected to be husband father me business owner work out be happy uh make dinner pick up kids juggle juggle what life throws at us right and then like for me it's a i'm not good at it i, I mean i can admit like I've, I've gotten better um I've sounds gotten, easy man so what are you yeah. talking about well i mean like <laughs> When we're, there's so many topics we can go here. Like when yeah. we're, when we're 20 or when I was in my early twenties and got hired, it was me and a dog like that. That was yeah. my only responsibility. So I can be selfish. I can go to, I can go home, take a nap, go to the gym at noon, eat what I want, go to, it's very <laughs> selfish, but I think we put a bit really we make selfish sound like a bad word <laughs> and it's, and it's not. Mm, and I think no, I, yeah, we, no. these people in this, the, the, we, we, these people in this industry still have to, or any industry still have to take time for ourselves. And if, and if we want to coin that phrase of being selfish, then, then so be it, but let's not put a negative spin on it. Right. Like you play hockey. I, I lift weights. You, you go for a run. I, 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 go do CrossFit. Like it's an outlet. It's a way to turn the brain off. It's yeah. a way to reset, it's a way to get out of, um, the mundane or the, or switch gears for a lot of people. So no, I mean, a lot it, of topics there, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to say it was like, this is actually the second time in recent recordings that we've talked about selfish being selfless. Like when you're selfish to take care yeah. of your mental, physical, emotional well-being in the idea of being able to balance as best as can be your roles, which, you know, we mentioned yeah. earlier, you know, both at work and then at home and then in life. And, and, and you talked about a lot too, like you, you mentioned a lot of things broken, which is similar to me. Uh, uh, and and then also you know this is this is unique as far as so so being that firefighter my mom was actually a firefighter in the suburbs of chicago and i remember uh when she would work overnights and 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 then she'd she'd come home and then there'd be days where she'd have to sleep all day to catch up essentially because there were calls all night you yeah. talk about that so i mean whether you're a firefighter or not anybody listening can probably relate to you know i've broken something mm -hmm. or, or on their body or some kind of physical ailment that's felt yeah. limited and then the mental aspect whether it be 
lack of sleep hours. For example, my wife, when she was in the news industry, she would be, uh, she, she still had to be mother. So she'd be going to bed around like eight or nine o'clock, but she'd have to get up around like 3 a.m. because she had to be at the morning show. And then she'd be working until, you know, like one o'clock. And then she has to be mom again in the afternoon. Uh, so I guess what I'm getting at is there's a lot of things that could it'd be easy to say, I mean, it'd be easy to say, screw working out, screw eating healthy. I'm just going to go through McDonald's. Yeah. I'm just going to go sleep all day. Yeah. I'm going to just do it again. I'm going to drink a bottle of vodka or whatever to oh. numb the pain. Mm -hmm. Why don't you do that? Yeah. How come, what, how, and why don't you not only do that besides the obvious healthy, how are you able to yeah. not do that? Why? Uh, yeah. I mean, why do I not do that? Um, I, yeah. I, going a little bit deeper than the obvious of I want to be healthy. I think, I think every day we wake up with choices, right? Like yeah. I've seen a lot of, uh, servicemen and women, whatever the discipline or the role of fire, police, military, nurses, doctors, whatever, especially going through COVID in, in before and after of revert or going to, um, dealing with vices and negative or dealing with stresses of, of life, um, and the job <laughs> through negative Devices, right. So, um, I'm not numb to that and I'm not, um, shaming that. I don't, I don't stun my nose to that because, um, it's, it's a very real thing. And unless you've experienced or been in that mind space, it's, it's, um, it's very easy to be like, Oh, that's not me. I'm better than that. I would never do that. But, um, it's, it's very real and we For have sure. to be very aware of that. And, it, and I don't think it's the fact of, I want to be a piece of crap or not be there for my kids or sleep the day away or get drunk. I think it's that people, men and women don't have the outlets, uh, whether it be counseling, working out a passion to do something else outside of the job. We let the job define who we are, as opposed to the job is a, check on my resume of life, right? Like when I was young, firefighting um, really defined who I was because I was getting into the job. I was an athlete. I wanted a team. I wanted to kick in doors and run in every fire and save babies <laughs> and do all this yeah. stuff. And it was very, it was very defining, right? That's just the alpha mentality. Uh, we're all in and we're all in together. I lived with a bunch of firemen and ex-military guys and it was for, it was great. Right. I mean, but as we evolve and mature, um, we still see it. We, we, as in the, as in, we still see the bumper stickers and the license plates and the guy who always wears the, I'm a Denver fireman or I'm a, you know, New York fireman t-shirt on his days off and drinks out of the, like, we can't let that go. And I would say that the yeah. one thing that, that helps with that is like, I'm a fireman. I'm a fireman 24 hours a day, 10 days a month. I do a lot of teaching and coaching and things that keeps me engaged on my days off, sorry, on my days off in that world. Um, but that doesn't define Brian cash, um, being a, a good father, being a great father, work, work, working from good to great in that capacity of being father, stepfather, working in the capacity of being, um, of being of being a good husband and then a better husband or a faithful human or, or faithful man or uh, are the more defining things that I want to be recognized and known for. Like we joke, like at any given day, if I leave the Denver Fire Department and turn in my resignation and retire, there will be another man or woman in my seat the next day doing my same yeah. job, getting the same training. We're we're, we're a number. And that it, if we think we're more than that, then we get a little cocky and above ourselves. And if we can lay some impressions and train some younger fire service men and women, then that's the impression we want to leave in this industry. But be multifaceted, be diverse in your approach. Um, you know, working out isn't for everybody, but find a hobby, find something else to do. Um, painting, writing, readings, music, lift weights, go do CrossFit, run, run a, run a mile, run a 5k, run to something. So, um, hopefully that's kind of answering your question, but I think, no, yeah, we're, I mean, you know, I don't... you, you, you hit the nail on the head as far as, uh, you said something like we, uh, let the job define us occasionally. We let the job define us, but we, instead of being our 
job. The job is just something on our resume. And I, I was just thinking, you know, something that I say is my number one job is dad, husband. And yeah. I like what you said there just recently, like someone else could do our career essentially. But but I'll just add, which I think what you were getting at is someone else can do our career, but no one re- could replace your role as dad, husband for the ki- yeah. your kids. And and you are number one. And and yeah. and so that needs to be your priority. And that is your priority. So what it sounds like that everything as far as your health, your business that's behind you right now, your job as a firefighter are just things that you do and tools that you do to be better at your number one job, dad, husband, and just to be able to provide, yeah. to be able to support, uh, to be able to be present, and to be able to be flexible, those kinds of things, be healthy, uh, mind, body, and spirit. Yeah, I mean, I think we all need, I, I think that that's a fine balance, right? Like I do a lot of stuff. Um, I don't do a lot of stuff only for others. I I would be lying to say I do all of this stuff because I want to be a better, a better dad. No, I I do a lot of this stuff to be a better dad and a better husband and to put my family first. Yes, that's true. But I like teaching auto extrication or I like talking to you right now. I, I could, we, you and I could be, playing hockey or, or playing, you know, at the park with our kid right now, you and me yeah. right now for this hour, we've chosen to engage with each other right now um, and spend the hour together because there's some fulfillment self for, for our own person right now. Oh, yeah. Like I'm getting a lot out of talking. Right. So it's a balance of f- filling this bucket of, of, of Brian and filling this bucket or these buckets of husband, uh, father, uh, faithful man, et cetera. We, we need to fill these buckets. And, and when these buckets get out of line and I'm doing everything for everybody else, there's resentment and there's frustration and there's unhappiness within ourselves. And then we divert to doing stupid things or things that don't make us multiply us our unhappiness. But when these things are kind of like right here, then we're good. We're, we're productive in both worlds or in all our worlds. And we're, be, we're able to provide and put out to the universe, our best self. Um, when I, when I work out for three hours a day for consecutive days and I crank on my computer and I don't, and and this starts to teeter and my kids don't see me and my wife's frustrated and I don't make dinner, then universe gets out of whack and I need to bring it back. So, um, yeah, don't, don't tip the scale in one one extreme or the other, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. So you said uh, we we essentially fulfilling our bucket and you talk about work. And I really believe that we are meant to work. I mean, I see ads all day long. Stay at home, not do anything, make a gajillion dollars. And while that's all nice, I think we're supposed to contribute something to this society. So there is that there's that fulfilling. And like you mentioned mm-hmm. this, I'll, I'll share right now. Like I do this podcast for multiple reasons. One, I love getting to know people at a deeper level. And there's nothing mm-hmm. like what I've been able to do at a podcast. Yeah, I could sit on a park bench and but I'm not going to ask maybe the same in-depth questions, you know, right. uh, I'm, you know, plus another bonus. So for me personally, I love getting to know people at a deeper level. I love interviewing people. So another personal thing, but I love the fact that this is a free way for people to by their choice to be able to listen to something and gain valuable information. I mean, mm-hmm. for since the age of 12, I can remember saying, uh, that I wanted, no matter what I did, I just wanted to make a difference in this world. And I wanted to provide some level of service. I didn't say it quite like this, but I wrote it down that I just wanted to help as many people as possible, essentially. And this is just another way of doing that, which is a win-win, right? I'm helping people, which helps people, but I'm helping people, which makes me feel good. If for those that know how the brain works, our brain is literally and the endorphins go off when we serve and when we give just like, you know, our favorite food or having sex or things like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, w- filling our bucket. And then you also talked about, you know, cooking dinner and things getting out of whack. And, you know, we hear this word balance and I even use it because I haven't figured out a better way to really say it. And maybe you have something. But the point is, like, I, I, I'll give a personal example of myself like you did. Um, I was really trying to finish up my book, which I turned in my se- my second book. 
But I was really wrapping up, and I'm a big active guy with my kids. I spend quality time with my wife. These are these are standards. These are staples. But I just said to the family, I I want I feel so close. Give me this week, so I will try to get in time. But I may, cannot make promises that it's going to be an every day. I ripped mm-hmm. it out by Wednesday, and on Friday I made up for it with my kids doing activities, going to museums, going to f- eating dinners, things like that. And then on Saturday, me and my wife had a day. So it's like that's what I look at balance. It doesn't mean balance every single day, every single week, no. but you need to have the self awareness. If things are out of whack, like you said. You need to make up for it and you need to be diligent yep. about that. Yeah. Correct. So I agree. Yeah. So, I mean, you have touched on it. So that seems like a good segue. So how are some ways that you balance, you know, your father, your firefighter in the store, uh, you, you're running these businesses, uh, you're teaching and educating. It sounds like, you know, you're like me, a man of many hats. So how are you balancing and all this out as best as possible, especially both at work and home? Um, I think, I think that that's the ever, that's the other question. I think it's if we're striving for equality in a balanced perspective of life, I don't think we're, I think we're going to go crazy, honestly. (laughs) Um, I think that, like you said, one, one gets more, one gets less and it's, and it's a perpetual attempt for balance and equality. Um, there are certain times of year, like I'm going to Indianapolis next on Saturday for a week to go teach at a big conference, uh, fire service side. But I know Friday will be spent with my family. I, I don't schedule anything on Friday so I can pack and engage and, and be present to then fly that. out on Saturday. Yeah. Um, there's just certain things that I think uh, we have to my wife and I share a calendar utilizing tools that were, are within our scope, um, like calendars open lines of communication between the people that are the buckets matter, uh, whether it be kids, uh, wife, spouse, what have you. Um, and just being very honest and being very transparent with what your intentions are. My intention, like for me, my intentions are never not to spend time with family or neglect one area of life, but sometimes that happens. And if you're honest with what you're attempting to do, I think there's never, there shouldn't be, this, um, level of, uh, you know, negativity or resentment because you're always striving to, to be better or to do the right thing. Now, if we're saying, yeah, uh, every, you know, every other night I'm going out with the boys to drink at the bar and, or to the sporting event or whatever. And, and I'm not going to, um, you know, be home for dinner. And uh, that, that's my transitional period. I think then we need to relook at where we're devoting time and effort. Right. Um, so it, I think that that is the balance of, uh, wh- how are you spending your time? How are you attempting to balance it? And, um, it, it, and, w- and the give and take with the people that matter. So, so it sounds like, yeah, you, you do a good job. Do you do, do you schedule any downtime even for yourself, whether it be meditation, sitting in a hot tub, what? Yeah, I think there's strong attempts to do that. I think we, I, I think we, I tend to put myself last in that regard. Um, okay. you know, cold plunge at the house or my wife and I try to do a date night that obviously doesn't happen as often as we would like, but it does. Um, but those are in the calendar, you know, I, I do try to, um, meditate journal whatever you want to call it in the mornings and that i would love for that to happen seven times seven days a week some then it usually happens three or four um i would love to cold plunge four times a week but i usually maybe get one two or three depending on the week so mm-hmm. um i think setting yourself up for success but not being not being negative and hard on if you don't hit the goal right it's not failure yeah. it's just that's the goal that that's the hundred percent. And I got 80%. And as long as I, as I prioritize correctly, I'm not going out meditating, ice plunging in, in, in a date with my wife, when my daughter has a ballet recital, she needs me at, then things can kind of, can kind of line out correctly, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things, be flexible, do the best job you can, Mm-hmm. try to limit the energy that you put in beating yourself up, as you say, mm-hmm. like, you know, it's going to happen sometimes, but part of that is just assessing, adjusting, yep. analyzing, and then seeing what is maybe, for example, um, I remember where my, I mean, I've been doing a morning routine, night routine 
for prob since my tw late twenties and I'm 42 now, somewhere around there. I'm but it just started out with movement and a little bit of breathing, you know, and it's definitely evolved. But I remember I got so into it. I was like, it was, I was spending too much time doing too much, you know? Uh, yeah. and I, and so it's like that balance, like, yeah, you want to prioritize health, but at what cost <laughs> you know, are you running late to your first appointment? Are you completely ignoring your family as I did for a brief, brief, brief moment. Uh, and then I, and then I checked myself and I realized I didn't need to do all these things and some things I could downplay, uh, you know, for example, the cold plunge I do every morning, but I noticed for me, that's, that's a staple, for example, for me, for the mental yeah. aspect of it. And yeah. if it means that I do that and I don't maybe journal or I don't read. So like the there's, it depends on where I'm at in my life and if I need to cut something out, if I, if life uh, alters or, you know, later on. So, I, so I like that. I, I, I agree. I think you need to have things though. You need tools. You talk about scheduling and uh, I've had people give me a hard time, but I even schedule playtime and like, I want to be spontaneous with my wife and kids. I was like, well, you can still be spontaneous, but at least put yeah. it on the calendar. You're going to go be spontaneous because it, I, one thing I've learned, if I don't schedule it, whatever that is, like if I except for working out. Uh, but it, it, if I don't schedule it, it's not always going to happen. Like, uh, mm -hmm. if I don't schedule the oil change, it's not gonna happen. If I don't schedule the playtime with the kids, if I don't schedule the date night, if I don't schedule, you know, almost every aspect and it, you know, it might sign overwhelming to people that don't, but it's a process. Don't feel like you gotta schedule everything day one if you're not used to it, but just start out in incremental stuff, which I'm sure is what you've done. Yeah, I mean, I think scheduling turns into I got to take time to schedule. So, you, you know, like people, it's trying to understand it, it. It's taking small bites to then scheduling creates freedom. And if we look at scheduling and or prioritizing and or um, uh, writing notes or, or a path for the day, the week, the month, the year, um, inevitably that takes time, but it, it I swear to you, it, it creates freedom in the end, right? It creates a mental space to say, I'm going to start checking boxes on my daily list, my monthly list, my goals, what have you. At the end of the day, at the end of the month, at the end of the year, the week, um, it creates freedom. Uh, I forget who said it. So don't, don't, don't quote me, but something to the effect of, I, um, I break my days up into six hour increments. And so midnight to 6am, or you can break it up. However you want, you can go 6am, to uh to noon i'm gonna do x i'm gonna i'm gonna crank out work i'm gonna crank out emails i'm gonna crank out meetings 6 a.m to noon noon to six is gonna be family time or noon to six is gonna be family and me time of dinner and working out etc um but if we end up doing that in increments of blocks in a 24-hour period there's four of them six times four is 24 so if i have at the end of the day, if I have two working sessions of six hour increment or in those six hour increments, I'm doubling my work capacity. Yeah. I'm timesing that by six for my family <laughs> time. Right. So like it could be four hour increments, it could be six hour increments, but literally blocking out. I mean, there's so many podcasts and so many things to read and write about. Like you don't don't have the mental capacity to sit at the front computer and crank out eight hours of work. It's physiologically impossible, <laughs> you know, neurologically impossible, but quality. If work, I give myself quality, three hour yeah. blocks. Yeah. Quality. I mean, I could sit here for however long, but like, uh, three to six hours worth of cranky day out. No mm -hmm. other, no other nothings. Cause I don't have it scheduled. My productivity goes through the roof, right? Like, um, yeah. so yeah. 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 I was just gonna say, I agree. Like I was, I was never a computer guy. So one, I had to change my verbiage. So writing a book was really challenging, but then I started reading books and I realized most writers, like the experienced ones, were only sitting down for like three to four hours a day. And, and, sure. and, and some days they'd sit down and they may not only get an hours of writing in. And so that gave me a lot of, and I bring that up just because it's like, you know, we put these, I, I put a huge, like, Oh my God, I got to write all day or I got to get a lot done in this. And you know, and it's just navigating. Like I hit a writer's block, so I had to find a different muse. I remember spending hours at the museum art gallery that I tell everyone about. I like library wasn't my thing. So I went to the mag to change my scenery up and I would look at artwork in between, you know, breaks in the writing. And I just, I just bring that up because it's like, you know, you need, you need to 
I like the block thing because I've done stuff like that. I have two very good friends uh, who run their own businesses that do that block. And they actually were the ones that introduced it to me. And it's easier to wrap your head around of like blocking it because, okay, this is when I'm going to do this. This is when I'm going to do this. And it makes it easier. So you have a cutoff time. I mean, especially for yeah. somebody like you and for those that are listening that like run a business, you know, cut off. You could literally work all day long if you wanted to. There's always Correct. something. I've known that. Yeah. <laughs> that That's the one tip I'll give anybody who's thinking about starting a business. But so you got to block it out. And one thing I know is everything is like a cycle. So it's like, you know, if you're doing good at business and you get a cutoff time, you know, but if you're and then you help your helping out and spending time with your family, they all work together. But if you're spending too much time at work, your family gets out of whack and then you get frustrated yep. and then your family sees it and then your work starts to get out of whack because your family life's a mess. And then that yep. becomes the cycle yep. and it could be a healthy yep. cycle with it all. So it sounds correct. like you're doing that. Correct. And what were you going to say? Sorry. No, no, I, not, you're correct. You're exactly correct. Yeah. Yeah. And so with that, I know there's a lot of firefighters, even police here in Rochester that have that have desires to start a business or they might be, but they're barely putting as much as they potentially could. And you're, you're running successful businesses. So what, what kind of tips could you offer people that either want to start or are considering or having challenge balancing that out or even growing it while being it doesn't have to be a firefighter, but that's your role. And I know there's others like that, yeah. but it's a challenge for anybody. Yeah, I mean, I, I a co- uh, for my specific endeavors, when I'm at the firehouse, I'm, you know, I'm not doing other work stuff, right? Like, I, it, it, that's my block. I'm there for 24 hours. This is my block. Um, I wouldn't go into something like that if you have additional responsibilities, such as the, we're saying, saying that I'm going to go, you know, work from from the firehouse at night and have those expectations. Um that's not realistic, um, yeah. which then <clears throat> compounds the days that you're not on shift. Right. So, um, but just in general, the block, the blocking out of time to devote, um, I think as much as you can do in terms of outlines. Um, so uh, starting a little, uh, uh, creating a new business now in, in the process of actually with, with Eric and doing some different things and just checking boxes and completion. Right. So like, I know I have to do this. I don't need to talk to an attorney. I know I need to talk to the, you know, the, 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 the mixing place. I know I need to talk to the, the realtor and like, and just literally almost like a flow chart and keep that document. I'm a big handwriting guy. Like computers are great and phones are awesome, <laughs> but I like to visually write it out and see it. Um, I feel that. and I'll rewrite it every day if I have to, but, um, getting in, finding whatever rhythm that's going to be for you. Um, to create, like I said, a flow chart, um, attack the business as if, um, attack the business objectives as if it is. And if you're in this world of fire, police, military, just like you attack the other stuff, you have a hierarchy, you have a discipline, you have people helping you. Um, you have a crew, you have people plug people into these spaces, um, to assist in the process. You need to be the master of the idea, but you don't have to be the master and the expert in all disciplines. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lot of things, Um, but this thing never stops. And I know where to plug and play people to support me and to support the journey. Does that make sense? When I first started out, I opened, I, I started this when I was 27, 28, uh, in this industry of business and health and wellness. And I did everything I read and studied. And I'm not saying don't be a master. Don't be versed. Don't get duped. Don't get taken, uh, ask for second opinions. Uh, don't be naive and stupid. Um, like I know how to do accounting, but I know I don't want to spend six hours of my time on accounting when it would take an accountant one hour, I'd rather spend the 200 bucks an hour, let that person bang it out because my time is worth something too. Right. So, yeah, no, I mean, I do something similar. Yeah. 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 
when I first got into business, I like yeah. I thought I had to huh. do all these things. And then I realized, man, I can only do things. And then I started to realize what my time was worth. And so any business owners, I always say, what's your hourly rate? Like, just put a number yeah. on that that matters to you. And, you know, and and just remember, what does it cost or what do you, would you put on it? If you have family, what would it be to spend more time with them? What is that worth? And and then, yeah, mm-hmm. is it worth investing a little bit in this and accountant? It, you should learn something. And it sounds like you're also saying you should vet some your sources, too, because before you just go aimlessly yep. hiring somebody. Yeah. That's why like, you know, having networking groups, connecting, hey, who's your accountant sure. things like that. So I'm grateful in my industry because I, I can, I have either clients that can help me <laughs> in a lot of these yeah. things or they have people, for example, yeah. lawyers and accountants and things like that. So uh, I like yeah. what you said that the mind never stops and I'm with you. So this is kind of switching gears. How do you get it to stop? Or, you know, so you can get a good night's rest, be present with your kids, your wife. What do you do? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can do it. Um, I sleep <laughs> pretty good. It's hard. Like, like, like when I, yeah. I mean, like when I lay down, I'm out. Right. Um, yeah. but when I wake up, it's, it's go time. Um, so how, how do you do it? I think for me, my, my mind, doesn't stop when I don't feel fulfilled and or successful with what I've done for the day. Productivity. Productivity yields, yields, yields down, yields, take it out of gear for me. So um, if I have a list of things to do and I don't do them, whether it be because I got a flat tire and I have to deal with that or because I pissed it away and went to the Rockies game, uh, uh, unscheduled and unsolicited, um, then I know my brain is going to go. I just know that. Um, if it's a planned Rockies game and I know I'm going to just go hang out with my dad and that's what we're <laughs> doing, I can turn it off because it's, it, it's in the, whether it's a day of planning and it's in the calendar or I planned it two months ago, I know. Um, yeah. it is, they, I don't let it creep up on me. It's when things creep up on me and they're un. I'm unaware and I, and I, and I can't control them. And I think that that's something for me that's a negative. Like I, if I can't control it, then, then it could, it could shift my gears and my mindset. Um, Uh, I'm pretty good at dealing with that, with, with diversity and other people's problems. And I come up with solutions based on my career paths, but, um, the brain doesn't stop if it's, if the productivity isn't there for the day. So that that is a constant evaluation of saying the nutrition plan, the podcast, the ordering of product and the lawn didn't get mowed today. Those were on my list of five to do for (laughs) Wednesday, let's just say. And because of an ancillary thing that I didn't have control of, these didn't get done. Well, the lawn didn't get mowed. And if it gets mowed tomorrow or this weekend, is that life or death? And then I just start, I can talk myself out of it and from a prioritization Mm -hmm. perspective, right? Like literally having the time to be like, dude, none of these are life and death. None of these are going to dictate you as a man, as a husband, and as a father, none of these are going to say aren't repeatable or able to be done tomorrow or the next day. Um, just wake up an hour earlier, crank out those emails, mow the lawn on Saturday. It'll be a little longer and we're good. But that is that constant brain of, yep, I just need to check myself and be open to that conversation in your head. Be open to that. Cause I know it's going to trigger. It triggers for everybody. It's just a matter of if you listen to it or not. And it, and it's harder for if my wife says, Oh, don't worry about it. No, that's my job. My job is to worry about it and get this stuff done as a husband, wife, a husband and the, a father that like, yeah. that's what I do. And so having somebody say, Oh, don't worry about it. Isn't helpful. You have to self check yourself and say, this is why you don't need to stress and press and worry about it right now. Yeah. Like it sounds like, you know, you have to be your own accountability partner as far as mm-hmm. on these things. And, and, and I like what you said there. You said none of these things are, you know, you have to decide if any of these things are life or death. And, and I believe, um, that's a good point to make because 
Well, it might be easy for people like us. Uh, just I imagine a lot of people because you see it, they're always in a hurry. They're in a rush. They got to get to this. They're very anxious. You see the way people drive around here, the way people talk. It's like they're trying to jam so much in. So even though it's just mowing the lawn and it really isn't, it could wait till tomorrow. Yeah. Because of the way people's entire 24 hour cycle is, it could you got to do it now. I mean, yeah. I've seen people yell at people over little things because everything is an emergency. Yeah. So I think that's and, very and I, important. I, yeah, I get like that. Like, I, I guess yeah. I'm, my point is like, that is me. When I'm like, oh, man, I got to do this and I got to change the gutter and mow the lawn and take the kid and do, do all this stuff. That is me. But okay. at 40, at 43, we have to, or at any age, it's a <laughs> learned progression of, dude, it's, it's okay. Like have that mental fortitude voice in the back of your head or the forefront of your head to be like, it, it, it's okay. Like we can get through this. You can get through almost like you're just, you're your own coach, man. Like you're your own, you're your own worst critic, but you're, you're, you're your own, you're your own best advocate. So be the advocate for yourself and don't go into that spiral or that negative mindset of I'm a failure. I didn't get it done. Just crush it tomorrow. Or crush yeah. it when you can, or pencil it in, or take 10 minutes before you go to bed and be like, I got this, this is going to move here, I can delegate this, and I'm going to position this here. We're good. Yeah. I, I don't know why this question was in my head as you were talking, but man, so many people uh, go through life and are, are struggling to even get up in the morning and, and, mm -hmm. and especially when running multiple things. But I, I want to, what, what people struggle of, what's the point of life? Mm -hmm. And you seem like you do a lot because you understand it, you know, to provide for and wear all these hats, you know, what would you tell somebody? Like, what's the point? Like, you know, why, what's the point of high life? Is it to work? Is it to be miserable? Yeah. Is it to make money? Is it to provide? Is it be the best dad? I mean, do you have yeah. an answer? Is it, I put you on the spot uh, there with that one. So. <laughs> that's a tough one. Cause I, I mean, I ask, yeah. I think if you don't ask this of yourself or have a check in on a regular basis, then, then, then you're, then you're, you're going at it blindly, right. Then you, yeah. then you just, you're just hoping something sticks. Um, I think the point of, in a general sense, is to, is to leave your circle, your environment, your, the people that you choose to, to surround yourself with and vice versa, the people that choose to surround themselves with you, whether that's one best friend, dude, or wife, family, team, whatever that is, it could be one or a hundred, right? It doesn't matter. Um, to positively impact that human or those humans in that circle or that environment around you. It, it, if you can leave something equal to or better from an impressional perspective, not tangible perspective, not like I gave that guy a car, but like truly put a positive spin and or create a, a better environment for your immediate surroundings. That's the point that could be so almost monetary. Go ahead. Yeah, it sounds like a legacy of sorts that is bigger than gifts or money that yeah. is lasting past when you're gone. Correct. Yeah. And that was a very hard yeah. concept for me in the fire service. Um, going back to that original defining of employment, right? Like, dude, I'm going to save the world. I'm a fireman. <laughs> I'm big city. I'm going to save babies and dogs and kids. And I'm going to, I'm going to be the man and the, the Deborah fire is going to remember me and I'm going to be oh, a legacy. They're going to make a statue of me as, as, as the greatest fireman Denver's ever seen. <laughs> oh Seriously, man. Like those are some I mean? massive like that, dreams. Like, you know, that, that mentality of, I, I mean, that that's an extreme, but like, I'm going to leave an impression. It, it's not, I'm going to be remembered. I want, or I'm going to live, have this huge legacy in the Denver fire department. I want to impact one up and coming fireman or woman and help mold or modify their career. Yeah. I love you know, it. That might be a, that might be a day that might be a probationary person that might be mm -hmm. whomever, but if you can impact in your circle and that's how you remember, cause that one dude, it's like, man, that, that, that 20 year guy helped me out. 
or he made my career better. He taught me something. So, yeah. And that's lasting. I mean, like in, instilling, uh, like morals or values on your kids yeah. or some, uh, some kind of, for example, like uh, before we started recording, I told you I was being, um, I, I, uh, I volunteered to be the head coach for my son's baseball, not head coaching baseball ever in my life. I did play it uh, through about eighth or ninth grade. Uh, but and I just got off coaching hockey and I did it because there weren't enough head coaches. And And I said this to the other coaches, I want to develop uh, winning athletes. I don't care if we win one game. I want to develop mm-hmm. good human beings. Yeah, I lo- I'm a competitive guy, and yeah, winning is sure. great. But the priority is I want these kids not to remember me, but to remember that they built some life skills. They they learned healthy competition. They made maybe some good friendships that, hey, who knows? Maybe one of these kids on this team is their friend for life. I don't know. But I want this yeah. to be a positive impact because I might just see these kids for one year, and I feel my role – with yep. everyone I meet, especially when I'm in this role, uh, whether it's, you know, coaching my gym or, or whatever, even with my own kids that w- in these roles that it's to leave an impact. It's to leave a positive impact. And, you know, for example, at the end of practice yesterday, I asked, hey, how many kids learn at least one thing today? Everybody raised their hand. So I called out a couple to ask what they learn because I care more about them learning and growing yeah. as young adults and humans because I don't know what their home life is. Some of these right. guys don't even have fa- or some of these kids I know don't even have fathers. So yeah. like I'm can be this positive male role model in their life. And, I, and that's why I love what you said there. There's probably people you're exposed to that you don't know what there is going on mm-hmm. in their life. You probably have mm-hmm. some young firefighters that you don't, again, you don't know what their childhood, their life or whatever. Yeah. So you're making this impact. And it's again, yeah. we already talked about this. It's a win-win. It's a win for you. It's but, a win I for mean, them. And, and, and we run on calls every day that I don't know who the heck these people are. I don't even know their name. Yeah. But we're there to solve their problem, right? So that little five minutes, that little two minutes, that little 10 minutes of impact, my goal is to positively impact those people, right? Like, I love it. I, th- I think a lot of times it's like, it's like uh, a lot of people don't have jobs that they like or love. They, they're not fulfilled by their employment, right? And then I think we get in a spiral of, well, this guy's talking about firefighting. That's super cool. He loves his job. Oh, this guy's a coach and a and he's on a radio and he does podcast. He's got the best. He loves his job. <laughs> it's easy for him, right? Like we get built in this social media. This this I'm comparing myself yeah. to you and vice versa. And it, it, yeah, not everything is great. I do love mm. my job, but, but there's stressors. But there's but 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 I've gone through the steps to get there. Um, yeah. And I don't care if you're 20, 18, 45, you can change your path. Like if you don't love your job, find something else you have passion in. It might not be your job. Maybe you're making 50 grand or 500 grand a year. I don't know. But if you don't like it, change it. I know that sounds very simple, but if you don't modify it or do what you're doing, stop complaining and invest time into coaching a gym an adolescent, a team, kickball, what, find something you do like, like you, you, we sit here and complain and compare like, ah, I don't have a good as that dude. And I hate my, and I hate my job, but I don't have a girlfriend and my wife left me and all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, well, but, but do something about it. That's like change the path. Yeah. And you have a choice and, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. Yeah. Every day. Yeah, it's a great point you bring up because that was essentially the motivation to write my book because uh, I was <laughs> – so uh, two, this is multifold. I was uh, – the first book I wrote, I was uh, – a buddy of mine told me to write it. I uh, said, you should tell your story after we went on a mission trip. And, and I said, hell no. One, I don't want to do that. Two, I can't write. And who wants to hear my stuff? You know, who wants to hear my, my pain, my trauma, my stuff. And then it, it was a multitude of things. It was finally the thing, the straw that broke the camel back was in one day I heard from three different people not connected, similar to the lines of, Oh, you have a great life. It's never been hard for you. You've got good genetics. You're super fit. You've like, as if I've never had any challenges, struggles. And I was like, I literally said, F that I'm going to write this book. (laughs) Like that was, that was this, that was it. It was more of like, I'll show you, but it wasn't really that I knew this book was going to help people, but it's, it's along those lines of like, you don't know, uh, you know, I have challenges every day. Uh, I had challenges today before getting to this podcast, you know, and, 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 and it's in, 
and so it's the things that I do behind the scenes, the cold plunges, the, the, the downtimes. I meditated today. I needed, I laid on this like bed of needle Shakti mat. I don't do that every day, but it's one of those things when I feel really tense, it releases the tension. And so mm-hmm. I can come and show up for you because mm-hmm. I didn't want to come half ass this podcast because your time is valuable. My time is yep. valuable. Our producer's time is valuable. And it's those things. And that's why we have these tools. And that's why we do these podcasts right. and share these tools because you need them. And, yep. and to be it. And so you can show up and be the best version for that day, which may Correct. not be as good as yesterday or maybe better. Who knows? It's just giving your hundred percent self. And that's why I tell my kids when they go out on the ice or the field or whatever they're doing in life, even if they're sick, I'm like, okay, you give the hundred percent that you're possible for this day. And that, and that's don't what re- I, I'm, yeah. Don't regret. Right. Like yeah. I, I think we just get in this spiral of like, ah, tomorrow. Eh, I'll ch- I'll I'll make the phone call. I'll talk to this person. I'll get up tom- tomorrow. Resistance. Like, I don't know, man. Like I don't want to sound corny and cliche, but what? Like <laughs> we're not guaranteed any of. We're nothing's no. guaranteed. And, and if you think that like there's this coin phrase that everybody's saying now, like, and I know again it's on social media, but like nobody's coming to save you. Like I mean, no, nobody. Like you're <laughs> you. You have the power to make decisions, both good and bad. I tell my kids all the time, you can do that, but just be comfortable with the repercussions of that. I I don't want to do my homework. Okay. I can only push you to make you do your homework so many times. At the end of the day, if you don't do your homework, you sit in your room and literally waste your time and lie to me and whatever. (laughs) Be Do that. But when it comes grade grade time or report card time or whatever, it – be okay when you have a GPA of two or don't you go to college or don't get the, me. don't get the allowance yeah. or, or whatever the cookie is, right? Like consequences to, to, to the action. So yeah, I'm not, I don't know. Not, there's a I'm lot not, there, but like, yeah. no, I'm similar in the same way. Like I'm not doing my kids homework, but I expect them to do the expectations, but I'm also not going to sit here, scream, yell and stress and like, let my well, energy like be drained or be negative uh, or lose right, my temper right. over something that's their responsibility. And and I, I've said something similar. I don't have to say it anymore. It's pretty cool. They, they just come home and get it done. And uh, in fact, they found subjects they love, which makes it easier, but it took time to instill this is your responsibility be okay you know with the way your report card the way your yeah. gpa is going to look at the end of the year and are you going to be okay and it's it's asking good questions like that and you know yeah. i mean my kids didn't want those grades and and so yeah so let's before we we got a little bit of time here I, and i wanted to get into just my curious mind maybe somebody else listening and find it curious you, you, you've been in a firefighter for a long time, uh, mm-hmm. 22 years. Is there anything memorable, meaningful? I'm sure you got plenty or a story that just stands out that is just, yeah. you'd love to share. That'd be, yeah, I have a really, I, yeah. I, I don't want to sound negative. There's a lot of, a lot of negative stories, but there's definitely the, the fair share of positive. Um, mm-hmm. To your point, I wish I could write a book about every day because there's so many little things that are funny (laughs) that we laugh about that if I told you right now, you'd be like, that's not even funny. But it's just like in the moment and stuff. But like one story, um, I'll try to keep it short. So we got called middle of the night to a what I don't I don't know the correct terminology, but a a midwife, a a birthing center, like a midwife uh, center. Wives go there. Women go there, excuse me, um, to bear their children in natural homeopathic environments like pools okay. or just without medical support, yeah, right? They're like just Colorado, there as a yeah. midwife. And yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think we have that here. There, Scott. <laughs> there, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's yeah. a lot of those types of places. Um, not my, this is not a, my opinion or I'm not judging. Just I'll preface that. So um, we get called to a woman having complications in, in pregnancy. So right. we arrive and at this at this clinic, we'll call it in the middle of the night. It's barred bars on windows, bars, gauge cages around this place. Like you can't get in, you can't get out. Wow. Uh, so we have to get a saw. We cut our way through. We force the door. We make down this hallway. It's like dark and dank and not what you would think from a, a where a woman would have a baby. Um, hmm. Make down the hallway. We hear screaming. We make it down the hallway. And this lady uh, in very minimal clothing is 
exposed and um, her baby has been birthed, still attached to her via umbilical, but is, is not breathing and is not viable or isn't alive at the moment. So very tight quarters, can't get the gurney and the pram in there. We're bumping into each other. Um, there's a bunch of ladies in there, obviously chaotic. So I, we end up cutting the cord, uh, taking the baby, going into the, into the, into the rig and the fire truck, driving it to the medical center, hospital, NICU, all this stuff, ER, hand it off, do our thing. Good job, guys. We did the best we could. That was really messed up. On to the next one. A uh, couple months go by and uh, we get a knock at the door and the mother and the child knock at our door. No deficits, fully healthy. He's saying thank wow. you. Um, told us it's his his name. It was a boy. Is a boy, um, and uh, very appreciative. And it was awesome. So, um, really, that happened a long time ago, actually. But a really impactful, uh, positive, good call. So that's one of those. Yeah, you were talking earlier about like you're here to save children, and that's just one of those ultimate stories that you. Yeah. you hear about on on the news or something like that. that's incredible man that's a yeah. let's let's tie that in so with that what are some of the most meaningful moments you've had as a father and or stepfather oh. um a father just seeing i mean i was the first one to hold our daughter i mean um that's the best i, I don't know i don't even know like it just pauses me right right like that's just the coolest thing ever um yeah, I, I had yeah. Uh, time with our daughter uh, for a few hours by myself uh, while my, my wife was recovering and doing her thing. And um, as soon as she saw daylight and in into this world, I spent, yeah, probably three hours with her holding her. And that was that was amazing. Um, and then just seeing our daughter, our youngest, just evolve, right? Like, um I never knew how much I wanted, needed um, to be a dad until you're, I, I was or am a dad. Um, and it was, is remarkable. So like, yeah, the evolution of her for the last three and a half years of just her mannerisms, how she looks, how she acts, she, what she does that is, is replicable of me or, and or my wife being my wife in, in her and her mannerisms is amazing. Um, stepfather. Yeah. I mean, I've been, a stepdad through a very young age of the girls, uh, are, are my stepdaughters and then into now teenage. So that's a very impressionable time and evolution and hormonally and, <laughs> and all of what, yeah. what life has to offer. Um, so there's been butting of heads and some big, big learning lesson hurdles to the point of, great times and seeing them evolve as well. And, and even being a stepfather, but knowing that I have, I do have a direct impact and correlation with these two women um, that I, I, I don't want to say I just met, but they came into my life expectedly, but still unexpectedly, right. You don't ever plan to be a stepdad or a step parent. It, it, mm. You, you take that responsibility yeah. on as, 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 as life happens. <sighs> but, um, it, uh, knowing that I get to, I have the opportunity to, I, um, to mold and assist them in their upbringing and into for the rest of their life is awesome. So I got, uh, I get to do um, almost like the best of both worlds, right? Like I, I get them and I get uh, at, at a teenager and I get um, our daughter at a, at a very young age and, and since she was a baby. So, yeah, I can relate. I got a 13 year old when you mentioned hormones, I laughed. So, but yeah, I think yeah. that's incredible. Uh, you know, I believe things happen and I, I like what you said there. You never knew how much you wanted slash needed to be a dad until it happened. I agree. Uh, I remember mm -hmm. in my mid twenties and I wasn't sure, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't really sure, especially with the life that I grew up into. Um, if, you know, kids was my pathway, but as soon as it happened and I held my daughter for the first time and just saw it, you know, I got, 
I didn't know what I didn't know. Hey, baby, I didn't know, you know, and then I got <clears> super <throat> emotional and it was just, you know, I'll never forget it. And it, and I thought, you know, with the second and then the third, uh, it would I have already experienced this. What difference? But it's man, it's a human life. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted yeah. to bring that up again because I just talked to a good friend uh, the other day. I actually played hockey with him and his wife's wanting to have a baby. And he's like, I don't know. And I. I actually shared my story with them. I was similar and, and I'll probably share this story that you just, I like really, you, you didn't know. And I never said it like that, but it, I, I would agree that I was probably the same way. Like I never knew how much I needed or wanted to be a dad mm -hmm. until it happened. And, and I believe, yeah. you know, you know, that anybody listening that, especially men that are listening right now that aren't dads or struggling, you know, you know, it reminds me of something that I heard from someone and it's see, uh, it, it, it's one, what he said, uh, just now, but it's, it's something that I heard recently. And it was, you know, when you're getting upset with your kids, which is going to happen, or you're yelling or you're mad, uh, you know, just look back because it's going to be, you know, you mentioned how quick it goes by and how short this would be. And, and if you could have a time machine and you can go back on that time machine to the day that you just yelled at him. And this was your only moment, like, you know, whether the kid lied to you, you know, whether they hit their sister, would you react differently if you're 80 years old going back in time to this same moment? And this is the only moment you could go back to, you know, just just how would you do it differently? And so, you know, it's it's things like that 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 also so along with you know if you're if you're currently that's for the current, but if you're not yet a dad and you have and you're not sure if you ever want to be, think about it long and hard because I will admit, and this is where this is going, I will admit, it's made me a better human. It's oh, made totally. as soon as that daughter was born, I realized life was not about me anymore. It was about yep. this child and providing. It gave me the biggest purpose ever. It got my shit together for lack of a better term. I got super organized. And not that I wasn't already currently working on my health, but like a lot of things you know, there was a bigger why to my life and I have other whys too, but that really, I'm grateful for that being the starting path to so yeah. many other, uh, positive whys in my life to get up, to wake up even when I don't want to every morning. So that's why I wanted to share that okay. and go on yeah. that. So man, you said it great. Yeah. <laughs> I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're the best thing that's, that's ever happened. I, I don't even, yeah. and, and I, and I would, and I would err on the side of like you're saying like oh you know i think a lot of men men or women couples whether dating or otherwise uh, is let's ha let's let's have a kid if, if yeah i mean that i guess that's a good starting point but like i don't i think it's almost more of um let's let's talk about what it's like to give up and be selfless and it isn't yeah. about how it's not about let's have a kid. Let's say, what if we, what if we don't, what if we aren't a father and a mother? Does that make sense? Like, no, is yeah. That, I mean, is that going to crush us? Is that going to hurt us? It's, I think it's easy to, it's easy to say yes to things you don't know about, but everybody tells yeah. you it's positive. I guess is my point. Like, yeah, oh, let's, I mean, but everybody else is having a kid. Let's have a kid. <laughs> well, what if we don't? Well, are we okay with that? You know? Yeah. I, I always think of it as like this, you know, if you're having a kid, you think it's going to make life better then you're going about it wrong. If you're having a kid because you think it's the next step, well, I don't know. You need to have serious conversations about it. Uh, but also I look at it as like, you know, this is probably going to be the, one of the best, but most challenging things of your life. But I just know through my life that the most challenging things have made been the best parts of my life that like over that hill up in that mountain, you know, uh, you know, I become, become a better coach because that's essentially what I'm doing at home. You know, I, right, right, right. It, 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 so it's, it's a conversation for sure. And it's, it's, it's one of those things, you know, you got to really have that conversation, but don't look at all the positives, but also don't look at the negatives. Like one of the negatives that I hear right. often, Oh, I'm going to have a kid when I can afford it. Well, if we would have said that we would have never had kids cause you'll never yeah, be able to essentially kids. afford no. it. So in fact, you'll learn, I don't know. I mean, I would imagine 
like us, you start to learn to budget, <laughs> you know, you yeah. start because you yeah. got another mouth to feed. So th- there's a lot of positives and, and, and even with the challenges, I don't, there, I don't think there's any negatives. It's just challenges is the word I would use. Mm-hmm. And with those challenges, as long as you're willing to grow uh, together and communication, I could have a whole lot of other podcasts about this, but mm-hmm. you know, don't just say, I'm not going to have kids R- revisit that conversation, especially if your partner wants to, and think about all the great things f- f- is that could come out of it. So Sure. sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're going to wrap it up here, but I wanted to ask, is there, you know, is there any other, uh, I mean, we, again, we could talk all day. Oops, man, I, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so what that is, I'll actually share because this is beneficial. What I started doing, I got this alarm on my watch. I started doing this and I'm about five times during the day. I, uh, and maybe I'll ask you this question. I mean, that's why this happened. God works in mysterious ways, but it's, uh, uh, how do you, how do you feel and what are you thinking? Uh, and my kids have started chiming in on that. And that's what that is, is the alarm. And it's been a really cool experience to hear kids like imagination. Like my son had one that he was like on this yacht and we were all celebrating, uh, his like win. uh, I guess he's going to play in the major league baseball and on hockey kids dream big anyways, whether it happens or not, you know, we as adults start to not dream as big. I feel like, so being Mm -hmm. in a room and listening to a kid's dream and just being open to listening to it really makes your mind grow. So, yeah. Why well, don't I ask you that? <laughs> How do you feel, and what, what are you thinking? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, is this a present question, like right yeah, now? Yeah, sure. And then I'll ask one more. <laughs> uh, you can change it. The point yeah. is, like, if you're not feeling good, to make yourself feel good out of the whole experience. It's it's been a good exercise yeah. because, especially when I've been like kind of like stressed, it gets me to like alter my posture, alter my mood, and get to think about sure. something better. Yeah. 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 Um, I feel like, yeah, the, the feel is, is good. Uh, this, this is, I don't do a lot of these, so this is a great experience, a great conversation. <laughs> you and, can take it. Um, yeah, we're going to continue to work through that through the afternoon and, uh, get to get, do some family time tonight. So it's just, um, keeping it simple, you know? Yeah, I love that. So is there any other things, nuggets, tidbits that you'd love to give, whether it be a firefighter, a business owner, a father, a stepfather, uh, mm-hmm. if somebody's listening to this just on that we haven't talked about on improving their physical, mental, emotional, spiritual well-being to help them just strive? I think uh, don't do it alone. Um, yeah, don't. I think that would be in any of those categories that you just mentioned. Don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. And you're, you're not alone. We, we create yeah. our loneliness or our self or, or we, or we isolate ourselves, but, um, you don't have to have a wife. You don't have to have a girlfriend or a significant other to not be alone. You have friends, coworkers, people out there, phone numbers, conversations, people at the grocery store, at the gym, at your extracurricular. Um, but don't, don't pursue any of these, any of these tasks and or life alone. I think, um, men, men and women, um, I can attack, I can overcome do. I don't need anybody. Um, I can just, I'll just keep going, climbing the mountain and doing, 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 yeah. um, that only get you so far. You need, a you, you need people you, you need, whether it be for the outlet, the mental, uh, or just the support in the category in which you're speaking of. So. Yeah, I, I would I would uh, echo that as far as don't do it alone in all aspects, you know, especially personally and professionally. Find a coach, find a friend. But mm-hmm. I'd also, you know, you said something there. Y- you can, you can, loneliness and alone are essentially different things. You could be alone in a room and feel, but not be lonely, but you could be lonely in a room full of people. And, and that's all up in the mind. That's all up in the head. And that's a choice. And, and that's what you fill your life with and, and whether it's fulfilling or not and the things that you're doing, which we talked for the last hour on. So, man, I really appreciate this. Uh, this is great. This, uh, you yeah. know, Thank you. I believe that anybody that's a dad, I believe that anybody's a firefighter, anybody that's just, you know, wearing multiple hats, which I believe everybody is these days, could mm-hmm. really benefit from listening to this episode, from balancing or finding some sort of balance. And <laughs> and for those that did find value, which if you didn't, I'm sure someone you know did. And that's why you need to like it. You need to share and subscribe to this podcast. 
It's Drive365 because we are completely free information out there to help as many people as possible. We've talked about physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So thanks for tuning in to another episode of Strive 365.